morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Depending upon when you will be watching this session with your family. I um, welcome you to this month's faith formation session at 14 Holy Helpers Parish. And we will be talking about Holy Week, the most holy week of the Catholic Church. For those of you who might say, well, I thought it was going to be about the Trinity. Well, we decided that there was so much information and so much that we can share with you about Holy Week that we would, we would put the Trinity off until the next session, which is in April. So as we always begin our sessions for faith formation and for religion classes and whatever else, our masses, our prayers, we always begin with a prayer. And so I ask you to all just kind of, you know, sit back in your seat, relax, push everything out of your mind that doesn't remind you of Jesus, and just get ready for our opening prayer. And I ask you for the first part of our opening prayer to open your ears and listen to the words that I'm going to say for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh God, our Father, you sent your Son Jesus to earth to live and to die among us. He was your most beloved Son, he was born in a manger among the animals, yet he was our king. He lived with the poor and the sinners. He taught us about you and how to love as you do. How much it must have hurt to see what evil people did to him. They tortured him and then crucified him on the cross. However, we know that in three days time, he rose from the dead and lived on earth with his disciples for 40 days. He then ascended into heaven in front of those disciples where he lives with you and waits for us to come home to you someday. Thank you for your generous gift of your only son, Jesus, who saved us and made it possible for us to live forever with you. Please help us to remember and honor all the events of Holy Week and all that Jesus has done for us. And then let us now together pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, Holy Week. Holy Week is upon us. And we've been, um, we've been going through Lent now for about five weeks. And the very last week of Lent is called Holy Week. And as the word holy suggests, it is the holiest week of our church year. And Holy Week begins on a special day called Palm Sunday. And um, on Palm Sunday, again, it's the Sunday, we should be either attending Mass at church where we can pick up some palms, which will uh, remind us of um, what happened in Jerusalem on the day we call Palm Sunday when Jesus rode through the town and he was hailed as a king. Um, if you're watching from home, you can't um, get any palms, but please do. Please watch a mass on Palm Sunday. And this is the day we hear all about the story of Jesus's passion and his crucifixion. So the first thing we're going to do for you today is we're going to show you a little video. And I have three videos. They're all very similar. They're made by the same group. And so some of it might be a little bit of a repeat from one to the other. But I think you'll enjoy it. And so this first one is called The Triumphal Entry. And it's about the day Jesus came, rode into Jerusalem. This 
this is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town. And Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Eh, okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. Okay, go ahead. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. The Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. Hey, Jesus! And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, It's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. Well, what did you think about that video? Did you like it? I thought that you might. I have a couple questions concerning that video for you to, to you can answer, you know, in your family group, um, or maybe in your heads or think about for later. My first question is, what special kind of donkey did Jesus ask his disciples to get for him? Do you remember it was a special kind, a donkey that had never been ridden before? And then another question, how did those people, how did the people of Jerusalem um, act towards Jesus? How did they treat him? Yes, they treated him like a king because he, to them he was their king. But there were some people who weren't that happy. And they told Jesus to tell the people not to say those things about him. So, as we're going to see as we go through Holy Week, this was a special and wonderful day, Palm Sunday. And everyone treated Jesus in a wonderful way. But as we get through to the end of the week, we will see how people's opinions and the way they treated Jesus changed. 
And so we're going to go Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday. And usually on Tuesday in the Diocese of Buffalo, that's all the area, you know, around us. We have our Bishop, um, Bishop Fisher now. Um, usually there's a special mass down at the cathedral, St. Joseph's Cathedral, where the different parishes of the diocese bring their bottles for the holy oils. And there's three types of holy oils. And you bring your bottles and it's a big mass and there are many priests there. And then the deacons from the diocese stand in the back of the church and they fill the bottles. And those little bottles that they fill will be the oils that are used for the different for baptisms and confirmation and anointing of the sick throughout the year. But this year, because of COVID, this is the second year in the row, this mass will not take place, at least not on as grand a scale as it usually does. So we're gonna go through Tuesday and Wednesday, and then starts what we call the Triduum. And the Triduum includes Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Last Supper, it includes Good Friday, and it also includes the Vigil on Holy Saturday. And so the next day we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about Holy Thursday. Now, I think you know the story. You remember the story of Jesus celebrating the, um, the feast of the holiday of um, Holy Day of Passover. Now, remember, a lot of people will say that Jesus was a Christian or Jesus was a Catholic. Jesus was a Jewish man. And um, so he and his family and his friends, who were also Jews, they all they celebrated different feasts as we celebrate, like Easter and Christmas and whatever. Um, and so the Feast of the Passover celebrates when, and think, can you think back to the Bible, the, um, during the time of the great pharaohs and the Jews, um, the Israelite people were slaves to the Egyptians. And remember Moses, the story of Moses and how he kept asking Pharaoh to let his people go and the Pharaoh kept making up stories and promises and whatever. And then seven plagues were sent upon the people of Egypt. And the last and the worst plague was the death of the firstborn of each family of peop people and animals. And the angel told the Israelites, the Jewish people, to um, take a young goat or a young ram or something of, of nature of that of an animal. And if it was a large family, you would take one. And if they're smaller families, you could get together with other families and you would sacrifice it. So that means you would kill the lamb and you would, or um, ram or goat, and you would do a little bit of um, prayer and whatever over it. And then, you would take the animal, you would roast it, and you would eat it with your family. Well, before you totally did that, the angel told the people that they needed to take the blood of that animal and they needed to um, put a marking above their doorpost of their homes because this was the night of the Passover, the night when the angel of death would come upon Egypt. And if the angel saw your door post with the blood on it, he would know that you were Jewish. And he would also see the door posts of the people from Egypt who did not have the blood. And those houses of the Egyptians, the firstborn would, would die. And this also included um, Pharaoh's oldest son. So finally, Pharaoh said to Moses and the people, you know, you can leave, just go. And the people left, and I'm not going to go into too much more of the story, but we know that there were other, um, Pharaoh tried to stop Moses along the way. So the people wandered in the desert for four, it wandered for 40 days and 40 nights until they, uh, 40 years until they came to the promised land. So on Holy Thursday, Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover. And it was at this meal that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, his apostles. Now, why did he do that? I mean, we know he was God. You know, God, kings, do they have to wash people's feet? Well, Jesus did that so that he could show us that even though he's God, that he would serve us, serve one another, and that we too, following in his example, 
would serve do service for one another and you know throughout the year usual years we do all sorts of service activities for others and then when the meal came to be they said jesus took a loaf of bread he blessed it and he said take and eat this is my body and then he took the wine he gave thanks and said this is my blood take and drink it and do this in remembrance of me when do you hear that i know you all listen when you're at mass that's right, those are the words of the consecration, when the bread and wine become Jesus' body and blood through a miracle called transubstantiation. Now, after they were done eating and having a good time together, Jesus, he knew he was going to die. He knew that one of his apostles would betray him, and they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he went with his apostles to pray. And these apostles were tired. You know, they had just partied and whatever. And while Jesus was praying, the apostles were so tired that they continued to fall asleep. Well, as this is all happening, a crowd of angry people approached the apostles. And then Judas, the man who would betray Jesus, led the crowd to the apostles. And he said he told them that he would kiss the face of Jesus to let them know whom they should arrest. And Jesus was arrested then and taken to the city very early on Good Friday morning. And now we've got another video for you to see. You have to give me a moment to get it here. This is the checkers game where grandson and granddad will bond. This is the kitchen where the new boyfriend will unofficially become family. These are the verbal vacation homes waiting for your family. How about Making money with DoorDash is super easy. So recently, I've been trying to figure out a way to make a little extra money, right? My friend was telling me about this DoorDash app and how I should give it a try. The sign-up process was super easy, and in no time, This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, Uh, hi. The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this, to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, 
This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, one of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry, and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. The story of Easter, the la Well, now you learned a little bit about um, Holy Thursday. And here's another question for you. Who was the apostle who betrayed Jesus? What was his name? I bet you know. Did you say Judas? Because the apostle who betrayed Jesus was Judas. Um, and you can see that evening Jesus had a wonderful time with his apostles. And he started or instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion, Holy Eucharist. And again, when you go to Mass, pay special attention to those parts where Jesus changed the bread and the wine and shared them with his friends into his body and blood. Well, we know then that Jesus was arrested that Holy Thir late Holy Thursday, early Good Friday morning. And he was taken to the city and he went before a few people, um, Pontius Pilate and Herod, and, and everyone decided that he should be crucified. And what really amazes me, and I hope you, you think about it, when we, when we saw the video and we talked about Palm Sunday, how did we say Jesus was being treated on Palm Sunday? Right, he was being treated like a king. And by Good Friday, the mood in the town had changed. And now Jesus was being tortured and he then was eventually crucified. So to show you the, a little bit of the story of Good Friday, we have one more video for you to see. So, and we're sorry about sometimes technical changes and problems, but I hope you're enjoying them anyway. We're going to go back to, well, we're going to make this smaller, and then, The story of Easter, the Last Supper.
Stories of the Bible. Jesus written. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms. <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus. Come in. Come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty. 
and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day. And ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. Oh, yeah! He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Wow, what another wonderful story. And it starts out very sad. Um, we see what happened to Jesus. and But then, in the end, the story was a great story because Jesus came back, he rose from the dead, and because he died, because he was crucified, he opened the gates of heaven for all of us. So that someday when we die, we can all go to live and to be with God and his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit in heaven. So now, things on Good Friday, we're going to backtrack a little bit. Things on Good Friday have, were very sad. And usually on Good Friday, we, we, we like to say that between the hours in, of 12 and 3 is when Jesus hung on the cross. And then you saw what happened at 3 o'clock what we consider to be around three. The um, the curtains in the temple were torn in two and it got very stormy out. And that's when we, they, we say that Jesus died. And Jesus, he wasn't a rich man. He didn't even have a grave to be buried in. So one of his friends by the name of Joseph of Arimathea lent him, well, I guess in reality, he gave him this tomb to be buried in, although Jesus... Again, he didn't stay in that tomb. He rose. And then he went and he visited his apostles. And they were so happy to see him. And, you know, eventually his mom and um, the two Marys who went to the tomb. Everyone was so happy to have Jesus back with them again. And we'll talk more about what happened after Jesus' 40 days here on earth at our next session in April. Now we're going to move to the Holy Saturday for a bit. Now Holy Saturday is kind of a quiet day. You know, things are pretty quiet. Not too much goes on unless you follow the Polish tradition of bringing your Easter basket to church to have your foods blessed. And this isn't a session on Sztrienstunka or Polish traditions. But if you do, we will be having a blessing here at 14 Holy Helpers at 12 o'clock in Monsignor Ebner Hall. So if you do your basket thing, bring your baskets here. But it's kind of quiet until what we call the... Oh, and I re just remembered, Miss Jenny, remind me, if you bring a basket, make sure everything's covered in plastic and it has to do with COVID, safety and health. Um, we don't want food germs to get on your blessed food. So later in the day, we, we celebrate what we call the Easter Vigil. And the Easter Vigil is a special Mass that is the first Mass of Easter. Now during this Mass, if there are new members of the church to be baptized or to make their First Communion or their Confirmation, this is the time, this is the Mass where this is done. Now the Mass has to begin it when it's dark. And so this year's Mass will, be, will start at 8 o'clock p.m. in the church. And everything's dark in the church. And then the Easter candle is lit. And little can people take, the um, helpers will take candles to light everyone's 
individual candles so that we all can share in the light of the Easter candle, the light of Jesus's candle. And so at that mass, we renew our um, baptismal vows. And again, it's a very beautiful mass. It does start later in the evening. So if you or your family members are gonna go, I'd suggest taking a quick little nap that afternoon. And then it, that leads us into Easter Sunday. And we all know what happened on Easter Sunday. We celebrate that Jesus, who was killed on Good Friday, rose from the dead and came back to life. And because Jesus did that, we, our sins are forgiven and the gates of heaven were open for all of us to come and live with God after we leave this earth. Now, I want to um, just briefly tell you a little bit, there's a lot of materials in the packets this month. Now, does that mean you have to do every single page and like, oh, there's so much to do? No, it doesn't. But because we're talking about Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, I'm not sure if Good Saturday's in here, but Easter Sunday, there's quite a few pages for you to do. And if there's something on Easter, you might want to wait. There is. You might want to wait till the next month to do, to do the Easter materials. So there's always, there's the gospel where we hear the story of um, the betrayal and the Passover and um, everything that happens starting on, good, on Holy Thursday and then going through to Jesus's crucifixion. So that's in here. There's one of those little children's worship bulletins with activities on all the um, important days of Holy Week. And then there's some other fun things to do. You know, there's, there's usually... Um, some fun things, some colorings, Palm Sunday, there's a prayer, an Easter prayer. So again, for pre-K through, through three, um, three right and now. then four and five, four and, up. and then we also up. have for fifth grade and up, um, and adults, right? Do we have an adult packet too? There's lots of things to keep you busy because I know you're going to have off from school that week also. So again, don't feel you have to do everything, but save them up so that we can get them back and just make sure you've been trying to keep up with us. I know this year has been confusing and we're hoping to get back to a little normalcy next year. But before we go today, I would like to read you this very special book that I forgot all about. I've read it before, I forgot all about it. And then when I was looking for a good book for you, I found it on Amazon. And I've already read it to my granddaughters, and they just loved it. And so settle down in your seats, just kind of relax, and open your ears and your eyes to the tale of the three trees. And you know that a tale is a folk tale. It's something that was started many, many years ago and has been handed down. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood, stood and dreamed of what they wanted to become when they grow up. Kind of like you. you. You talk and with your friends to see, what do you want to be? Well, the first tree looked up at the stars sparkling like diamonds above him and said, I want to hold treasure. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure chest in the world. And you can see the treasure chest he's dreaming of. The second little tree looked out at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down into the valley below where busy men and busy women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. 
I will be the tallest tree in the world. Well, many, many years passed and the rains came, the sun shone, and the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. Hmm, I'm wondering what they're going to do. Do you know? The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, this tree is beautiful. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining ax, the first tree fell. Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, this tree is strong. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining ax, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship fit for kings. Well, the third tree felt her heart sink when the last woodcutter looked her way. She stood straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to a carpenter's shop. But the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with treasure. He was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. Hmm, are any of you thinking what I'm thinking? The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took him to a shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were being made that day. Instead, the one strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. Too small and too weak to sail an ocean, or even a river, he was taken to a little lake. Every day he brought in loads of dead, smelly fish. Yuck. Can you think of a story about the fishermen? The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beans and left her in a lumber yard. What happened, the once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stand the mountaintop and point to God. Hmm, sounds like three very sad trees. You know, sometimes in life we have plans for ourselves and they don't turn out. Our plans don't turn out like we wanted, wanted them to. Hmm, let's see what happens. Well, tell me, did you think of this? Many, many days and nights passed. The three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. This manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly, the first tree knew he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. Who was that manger holding? Did I hear Jesus? You are correct. Better than being a treasure, treasure chest, huh? Holding the best treasure in the world, Jesus. And you can see his foster father, Joe St. Joseph, and his mother, our Blessed Mother Mary.
One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into the old fishing boat. The traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out into the lake. Soon a thundering and thrashing storm arose. The little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have the strength to carry so many passengers safely through the wind and rain. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand and said, peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. So who was that tired man? Do you remember that Bible story? And now we're gonna move on to the third tree and his, his surprise. One Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. And I know you know who this man was. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the first tree beautiful. It had made the second tree strong. And every time people thought of the third tree, they would think of God. That was better than being the tallest tree in the world. I guess God had different plans for those trees, and yet the plan was better than what they had even imagined. And so God has very special plans for you, too. So we need to let God guide us, and we follow God. We follow what God says to us and where he leads us. Now we're going to close this, this session with a little prayer. And I would like us to think about people who, while we all can celebrate Easter because Easter is a wonderful feast day and a wonderful holiday, and but all of us can't celebrate it in the same way. Some of us have lost family members and friends, so they might be lonely this Easter. And some of us might have not have enough money to buy special food to celebrate this Easter. And there are so many other things that may hold people back, maybe illnesses, um, but whatever, wherever, whatever we are in this world, we can still celebrate the wonderful celebration of Jesus's resurrection from the dead. And so let's especially rem remember all the people who need a special little remembrance at Easter and always. And we say in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord Jesus, please watch over those who are not as lucky as we are, who do not have the wonderful things and the wonderful people in our lives. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let's say a special prayer to Mother Mary to watch over those special people. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And um, I want to wish you a very blessed Holy Week, and a very blessed and happy Easter, and that comes from Father David, the um, rest of the staff, and from myself. And hopefully we'll see some of you at some of the pre-Easter and Easter services coming up next week. Bye!
Thank you, Jane.